Here's how you can make your images look sharper and cleaner with a little bit of Lightroom editing. If you want to follow along as always, you can find a link to download the raw files in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So the base for this process is always going to be a good sharp image. So make sure your photos are in focus before you go on with the editing. First off, we want to start this process in the basics tab. So let's expand it. You can see I already changed the profile to Adobe Standard. This has nothing to do with sharpness or cleanness of this image. I just like the profile better for this shot. Sharpness essentially is contrast. This in turn means by introducing contrast to this image, we can make it look sharper and clearer. I do want to bring up the exposure very, very gently, just so we have a little more detail in the darkest spots of this image. And after that, I want to bring down the highlights. This is mainly for the background. Now, due to these two changes, we did lose a little bit of contrast. However, we can tweak it further. Let's bring up the whites. And as we push the whites, make sure to pay close attention to the histogram because as we introduce contrast, we want to make sure to not overexpose this image. So I think just right around here looks quite good. Increasing the whites has made certain areas of the image brighter. You can see it in those bright parts of the trees. And thus we're introducing contrast and making this particular area look a lot sharper. One area where this is very, very visible is right here. Next up, to further improve the contrast, we can make use of the shadows and the blacks slider. So let's bring down the shadows and see what this does. So if I go really crazy, pulling down the shadows all the way, you can see its effect. However, I'm really not a big fan of bringing the shadow slider all the way down. I just want to drop it very, very gently. So maybe right around here. And let's also bring down the blacks slider. However, with the black slider, be very, very careful since you can easily introduce underexposure to your images. And that's also not what we want. So I'm going to bring it down just a little more. If you're not sure about underexposure, you can always hold down the Alt key while bringing down that slider. And you can see underexposure at this moment is only in areas which are not that important for the details of this image. So we can safely leave it at this point. And just with these five adjustments, we already have introduced quite a lot of contrast to make this image look sharper. Let me deactivate the basic settings so you can see the difference from before to after. Of course, we can further push it by simply using the contrast slider. So let's do that. Again, pay close attention to the histogram because as you can see, we are pushing the under exposure a little more, but I still don't think it's a problem at this point. Now that's it for the tone adjustments covering the image globally. However, we can make this image even sharper using basic adjustments right down here with the presence settings. Here we do have texture, clarity and dehaze. Now texture and clarity might appear to do the same thing and the difference is kind of hard to explain. You can remember it this way, clarity does target the midtones while the texture slider will sharpen detail. So we are going to use a combination of these three sliders to make this image look super sharp. So let's use some texture. I'm also going to slightly bring up the clarity. And let's also add a little bit of dehaze and see how this works out. I think this looks great. Important note here, be very careful with texture, clarity and dehaze because increasing these sliders too much will look very, very bad fast. I also want to give this image some more saturation, so I'm going to bring up the vibrance. All right, again, let's compare to before and you can see the difference is quite big, although we only used some very, very basic adjustments. Looks much better so far, but with a bit of masking, we have another way of introducing targeted contrast and sharpening. So let's jump into the masking panel. And I guess we can start with something very, very simple. Especially when you are shooting something with reflections, like in this case, you can add quite a bit of punch by improving the reflection. So I'm simply using a linear gradient here and I'm 
covering pretty much all of the water. I do have a rather hard edge right at the top of this linear gradient and what I want to do in here is to further make use of clarity and texture. What this means is I'm going to pump up the clarity quite a lot and you can see what this does to the reflection in the water. It makes it look way, way better. So here I also can safely increase the clarity quite a bit because it just makes it look so much better. Also, I'm going to add a little bit of texture in here just to give this area some extra sharpness. Okay. And again, we can also work on the tonal sliders, bringing down the shadows just a bit for even more punch. We can also work on the top of the image because at the moment, this area right here is a little bit too bright. And I think if you bring down the brightness in the mountains in the back, we can separate it nicely from the forest in the foreground. So I want to use a linear gradient covering pretty much the top part like this. And I just want to slightly bring down the exposure. And hopefully this way we can separate the mountains in the distance a little better from the foreground. Okay, I think that looks great. Of course, there are even more ways to improve the sharpness of this image. So let's create a new mask. This time we want to choose a color range mask. And with the eyedropper tool, I'm going to click on the bright areas of the trees, which are hit by the sunlight right here. This is looking like a proper selection. What we want to do here is basically we want to dodge these areas. And dodging means nothing more than just making these areas brighter. We can do that by bringing up the whites. Again, be very careful. You don't want to pull up the whites all the way because that looks strange and unnatural. We want to use tiny, tiny amounts. And besides the whites, we can also bring up the shadows a bit. So. This effect might not be that visible due to the YouTube compression, but I can deactivate this particular mask so you can see the difference from before to after. It's really a tiny adjustment, but it helps a lot. Another mask we can use is a mask targeting the midtones of the image. So what we want to do is to create a new mask and choose luminance range. In order for this mask to target only the midtones, we want to set it up. We are going to take the black point and pull it slightly to the right. We only want to filter out the darkest parts. So right about here we have filtered out all the blacks of the image and we want to do the same for the highlights. We're going to take the point right here and drag it slightly to the left. I'm always going somewhere between 5 and 10 points on both sides. Now we need to set up the softness of this luminance range mask. We can do that by pulling down this thing further to the right. So let's place it somewhere around here. And of course, we want to do the same on the, on the right side. Pull down the softness for the highlights. So right around here. What this does, instead of a hard edge as we filled out highlights and blacks, we get a very soft edge and thus it makes everything look a little more natural. So this mask targets the midtones. And with this mask, we're going to apply some midtones contrast. So what we want to do is we want to push highlights and whites by decreasing shadows and blacks. So I'm going to slightly up the highlight slider. I'm also going to increase the whites slider very, very gently. And let's bring down shadows. And let's bring down the blacks. We can even add some more extra sharpness by introducing some texture. Wonderful. Sometimes this midtones luminance range mask is not working properly, so you have to adjust these settings for the range. I really recommend not going too crazy with these sliders. It's not meant to have a huge impact on the image. Let me deactivate the mask so you can see the difference from before to after. Just adds a little more punch. And I guess we are already done with the masking. So let me also deactivate the masks so you can see the difference from before to after. And again, it's quite a transformation. Now for tip number four, what we want to do is we want to head out of the basic panel and we want to jump into the color mixer. Again, we want to work on the contrast and here we can make use of the luminance sliders. These control the brightness of a specific color tone. 
So we can use the green and yellow luminance slider to make those bright green trees a little brighter. Let's bring up the yellow luminance and let's also bring up the green luminance. Again, only using tiny amounts here. And once more, let me deactivate this adjustment so you can see the difference. Much better. We can also make use of the luminance to make the background darker by bringing down the blue luminance. Just a little bit like this. Perfect. So these are as well quite helpful for adding contrast to our image. While we're in the color mixer, let me also add a little bit of saturation to this shot by increasing the yellow tones, the green tones. I also want to bring up the aqua tones for the water in the foreground and a little more blue saturation. Okay, now tip number five, something not that obvious, but I want to head into the lens correction tab. Two things, I always make sure to remove chromatic aberration, which is a fine purple or greenish line around edges. Now in this case, there isn't really a chromatic aberration visible, but in, for some images, these can ruin the sharpness of an image and make it look very, very strange. So just always make sure to activate it because this setting works really well. Another thing we can use in the lens correction is a lens profile. So we can click on this thing and Lightroom usually automatically detects the lens we have used for an image. This does not always have an impact on the sharpness, but it's really worth giving it a try. Tip number six, of course, we can also sharpen this image in the details tab. So for the sharpening, I always use the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius all the way the radius just gives you the size around edges which will get sharpened. So if I set it to 0.5, Lightroom will sharpen 0.5 pixels around edges. If I would bring it up all the way, we would have a sharpening effect for three pixels around edges and this would be way too obvious. So bringing the radius down makes it much, much finer. Then I'm going to bring up the details all the way and we want to make use of the masking slider because we don't want to sharpen the image globally. We also we only want to target areas that need sharpening. So I'm holding down the Alt key and I'm going to push up the slider here. For this image, there is quite a there's quite a lot going on, so the masking slider is not that effective. However, we can nicely mask out some of these darker areas which really don't need any sharpening like that. And once we have set up this right here, I'm going to bring up the amount of sharpening a little more. And this looks perfect. And for the last tip, which often is kind of overlooked, we want to clean up this image. This usually means getting rid of sensor spots, but it can also mean getting rid of distracting objects and removing those will result in a much cleaner image. So since we're in the newest Lightroom version, we can click on the remove tool and we do have the generative AI available here. So there are a few things I want to remove. First, I want to get rid of this bright spot right here because we don't need that. And this generative AI takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it. I also want to get rid of that bright spot right on the left side. And let's see, maybe this thing right here. And I actually want to get rid of that path leading into the forest like that. And maybe this thing on the right. And let's see how this works. Let's click apply. Okay, I think that is much, much better. And that's my approach of creating sharper and cleaner images using a little bit of Lightroom editing. If you do have any tips or tricks to share as well, feel free to write a comment. Or if you have any questions about this editing process, let me also know in the comments. So thank you very much for watching this video and see you all next time.